The film you're about to see is a story based on real events. The names and places have not been changed. You are about to witness what no man has witnessed before as a witness of the unspoken facts. Can you stand the awful truth? Can you stand the story of how J. Edgar Hoover ate my pug's brains? Three years ago, on a dark and stormy night, he acquired a new puppy, a black pug. Someone had to choose a name for him, and that was to be my fate. At first, the task seemed easy. Why, just pick a name like Buddy or Charlie. But as the hours crawled by, I realized that none of the hundreds of names I had considered seemed just right. No name seemed to strike me. It was as if some thing was guiding me. Suddenly, while I thumbed through a rare book, borrowed from a long-dead Masonic worshipful master, I stumbled across the name. It stood out. It stood out like a nosebleed, dripping on a clean white shirt in the middle of a church service. The name? Hoover. Yes, it all made sense now. It was as if someone had just hit me in the head with a large fish. Without much effort, it became clear that our new pug was the vessel for the reincarnated soul of J. Edgar Hoover, the first director of the FBI. Indeed, if you completely shave our new pug's face, with the exception of his eyebrows, he would look just like J. Edgar Hoover. The similarity was striking and frightening. I beg you, judge for yourself. I took a ragged breath. How could this be? Surely no one would believe me. I would need proof of such a thing. Over the last three years, I've monitored Hoover's development. I wanted to see if he would take on any of the late J. Eggers' mannerisms or traits. J. Eggers' reach was a long one when he was alive, but I didn't expect him to grasp out from the shadows, the shadows that divide the living from the dead. Yes, I would have to be very careful. Indeed, I wasn't sure if my pug was now one of those blonde-headed children in science fiction movies that control their parents' brains. Perhaps Hoover now has the mental capabilities to bring the full weight of the American government down on me. And I just don't mean jail time for not cleaning up poop at the dog park. No, I mean our pug could be in touch with J. Edgar's brain, which we all know is stored in a vat at the Smithsonian Institute and hooked up to a supercomputer buried in the ground somewhere in West Virginia. I would have to be careful not to ignore the insidious warning signs, the signs that make me very, very wary of Hoover's special powers. I've kept a secret diary of the similarities. What follows are a few of my startling findings. I hope, my friend, you are prepared for the awful truth. J. Edgar was born in 1895. Hoover was born in 2005. Both J. Edgar and Hoover had a mother and father. J. Edgar graduated from college, and Hoover graduated from puppy school. Hoover, eat dog food. Good boy. J. Edgar was jealous of Melvin Purvis, the first G-man, and Hoover, he's jealous of any dog that touches his chewy. J. Edgar was a lifelong bachelor. Hoover, Hoover is fixed. Nah, don't worry about it. I don't think the director's going to need his winky. J. Edgar is said to have been a cross-dresser and a homosexual. Hoover, Hoover chews socks and is humped by our male minipin. J. Edgar could have. Who's at the door? Who's there? Who's there? Oh my god! Oh my god, it's the FBI! Oh my god, I'm doomed! I tell you I'm doomed. I'll spend the rest of my life in an LSD experiment and be assigned to remote view Richard Simmons naked in the shower while rubbing soap all over his hairy and somewhat feminine body. Jesus!
I must give Hoover a dog treat.